Hello and welcome to Game Overview. Today we will be talking about My Little Pony, The Runaway Rainbow for the Game Boy Advance. All right, well, let's take a look at this one. So the game is based on the direct-to-DVD movie from 2006. The general story consists of Rarity who just became a princess and she's got to learn how to make rainbows and, you know, the likes. Gripping stuff, I know. Along the way, you can trigger certain objects to play minigames and one of these is presented to you right at the beginning of the game. Pretty odd timing. Right off the bat, you're tasked with collecting ribbons and let me tell you, you'll be doing this a lot. And there's no real point in talking with any of the town folk because they don't really offer any valuable information as to where the objects can be. It's just useless banter or some type of minigame. And in terms of the minigames, there's no real reward to playing these other than just having something to do. Anyway, after you get the banners, you gotta walk all the way back to the castle, which sucks because your character moves aggravatingly slow. Immediately after completing the fetch quest, you get another fetch quest. You play another minigame with painfully incompetent AI, another minigame where you just color a bunch of hearts, a super easy version of Simon, and it's off to the next area. Another bunch of fetch quests, finding breezies, finding sleepy items, and if you thought that's redundant, it gets worse. In the previous area, all the items were available to find at any given time, so you just pick them up as you explore the town. Easy stuff. For some reason now, items are only available after you find and return the previous item to whichever character sent you out. This makes an already slow game even slower because now you gotta venture out, come back, and venture out again. It's monotonous, it's boring, I just don't get it. It kind of makes you look forward to the simple minigames because it at least breaks the slog. And the next area of the game is no better. Again, it's another fetch quest and it carries over the same rule that you have to find and deliver one item before the next item in your fetch quest becomes available in the game. But whereas in the previous section of the game, you were situated in the farthest left area so naturally all the items would be found traveling to the right of the screen. Now you start off in the middle of the play area. So you may head off to the left hoping to find an item only to realize that it's at the far most right side of the screen and you gotta walk all the way back slowly. And because items don't appear until you found the current item, the next item may be to the farthest left side this time, and you would have already found it had it not been for the way the game was programmed. Oh, and items can now be found inside buildings, so have fun checking the same building over and over again as you pick up everything for the upteenth time. This game is determined to waste your time. At one point, you find a dragon character who just keeps running away. And speaking of nothing going on, there's whole areas in the game where nothing happens. You just walk from one side of the screen to the other. Fortunately, there's only a couple more minigames and you're done with the whole thing. Now I know to some it may be a little silly to hear a grown ass man talk about a game intended for little girls. To which I say, don't hold such low standards for little girls, you dick. I'm not going to criticize the insultingly low difficulty because a six year old may still be learning how to even operate a video game controller, but it is definitely a boring game. The character walks very slowly and and the main focus of the game is collecting stuff. It gets old quickly, and believe me, children move on very fast. There's a reason why The Legend of Zelda is celebrated by so many people, both male and female. I was four when Super Mario 64 was first released, and believe me, I couldn't play something as complex as that, but it was exciting. There was effort put into it, and it pushed me to learn how to play the game. Runaway Rainbow holds the player's hand way too much, and there's a reason why not many people talk about this game today. I'm not saying it doesn't have its fans. I'm sure if you grew up with it, you have fond memories of it, but as a game, I know it's just for little kids, but so is Super Mario Brothers, so is Sonic the Hedgehog, so is Pac-Man. All these games are intended for children, and they respect them enough to say, hey, we'll start off easy, and as you get better, you'll get to experience the harder parts of the game that come later on. Runaway Rainbow feels like it sees little girls as so unthreatening that they wouldn't be into a game that gives them a possibility to lose, or so uninterested in actual video games that the whole game revolves around just moving pretty characters around the screen. There's no real challenge. I would only recommend this game if you could find it for really cheap because it is an afternoon of entertainment for your child. Other than that, they'll most likely get bored of it. Maybe they won't, but they would really have to love My Little Pony to get more than a day's worth of entertainment from this one. For Heroes of Fandom, I'm Boyle, signing out.